Hey, hey, hey. Hello, hello, hello. Hope everybody's doing well. Hey, hey, it's Brock right away. Right out of the gate, we got Brock. Mr. B in the house. I'm gonna see what Randy's up to. Let me text him. He's probably probably sitting around eating popcorn or a bologna sandwich. I'm live. Hey, hey, hey. Hi from Israel. Well, hello, hello. We're in Texas. Finally. We are finally in Texas. It feels great to uh, have the studio set up and get things going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Mr. Trey Horn in the house. One of the coolest cats on the planet. Sub Annihilation. Hi, Ron. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Better than I deserve. No doubt about that. Doing really well. Uh, yeah, I was just saying it feels great to get going and get the studio up and running. Uh, I've been MIA for a while because we moved to Texas. And this is the, uh, this is the new digs. And uh, we're having a blast. It's great. I'm doing really well. How are you doing? Hopefully well. I figured uh, for tonight, what we'll talk about is just updates, house cleaning topics. It's been a little while since I've been online, so I thought I would let you guys know what the plan is moving forward for NRD. So the first thing that I wanted to mention is for those of you that have already contributed to the GoFundMe for Randy, which is the binaural dummy head, I uh, just want to say thank you. Uh, obviously, a huge thanks. Um, unfortunately, uh, Sennheiser needs it back. So it's being shipped back Monday. Uh, my time is up. Um, and what that means for the GoFundMe account is. It's fine. It's still live, and you can still contribute uh, to the GoFundMe account. Um, I just won't be buying this used dummy head, so I, I don't get to keep this one is what this means. I was hoping that we would have the funds available before I had to send it back, but that's just not the case, and that's okay. Um, so that's the first thing I want to mention we're going to still try to buy this thing. And when we go to buy it, we'll be buying a new unit. And that's great. I mean, that's fine. I think there's just, it's just going to take a little bit longer to get it in house. Um, but no big deal. So that's the first thing that I want to mention. So that GoFundMe is still active. And I think the last time I checked, we're about three, 3,500 away, somewhere around there. So if you guys want to contribute to the Dummy Head uh, project, so we have Randy here to do binaural sound clips with commentary. Uh, I would appreciate it. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say about it. I don't wanna be pushy about it. If you can help out, great. And if not, totally okay, I understand. The next thing I wanna talk about is um, the listening room. And I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about what I've experienced so far, what the listening room is like. And there will definitely be a video that unpacks all this. It is interesting being in a older house in Texas built in the 60s versus living in Arizona my entire life and having those style homes. And we're talking about um, the materials that have been used to construct this home lends itself to a different ac acoustic environment. And so this house has sheetrock for sure, but underneath a lot of that sheetrock, you have uh, shiplap and the floors 
in this house are all oak. It's just oak floors, and it's really thick oak floors versus tile, which we had in Arizona. And it is fascinating how different this room sounds versus my other room, keeping in mind the dimensions are almost exactly the same. They're 16 feet wide and they're about 20 and it's about 20 feet deep, actually a little bit more than 20 feet. I think it's 22, 23 feet. And it sounds so different. And so I'm getting used to this new room. And I had kind of this moment of clarity, by the way, Danny Ritchie is in the chat. Danny, good to see you in here. Um, I had this moment of clarity. When I moved in, when we moved in day one, after kind of getting settled in, I was like, I got to get my acoustic treatment on the walls. And I started setting things up where I think, or I thought that it should go. I sat in my chair and I just kind of chuckled. And it was like, what am I doing? <laughs> Here I am trying to treat a room and I've never even heard of the room. And I thought, this is something that should be talked about. This, this should be part of the adventure because I think that's a big mistake. I think you're, unless you know what you're doing, really know like a acoustician and you, you really know what you're doing, I think that you need to experience the room and then allow the room to tell you how to treat it. And so this was something I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I thought it was really interesting and I'm going to be taking you guys along, you know, for the journey as I build the room and get it all set up. Um, right out of the gate, I'm really happy with the base performance in the room. Something that I've noticed is that as I walk around on this, you know, hardwood floors, you can hear like some doom, doom, doom. And I think that's actually helping with bass. I mean, sure, I'm getting some, you know, bleeding into the floors, and I understand that conceptually. And you don't necessarily want that, but it sounds really nice. And I don't know if that's exactly what's going on, if there's more to it than that, if I'm oversimplifying it. Nonetheless, the bass in the room is fantastic and it sounds great. So that was the second thing I want to mention. Um, the third thing that I wanted to talk about is upcoming reviews because that's what we're here for. And yes, I have a lot of stuff on my plate right now and I feel a little bit stressed because I didn't realize how long it was going to take to get everything set up. And it's taken a lot longer than what I anticipated. It took an entire week before our trailer with all of our stuff was even here. And <laughs> that kind of set us back a little bit. But nonetheless, um, these guys right here, these are the ELAC Unify Reference. I do have them in for review. And I, I think I have a good... Whoa, I didn't realize how close I was to those. Um, I think I have a good idea as to what's going on with these. And they sound pretty dang good. I'm really impressed with them. I need to spend more time with them before I do the review. I need to do measurements, of course. And I also have the hookies. And so I have both. I'm going to be able to kind of unpack both of those speakers for you guys. So that's going to be, you know, that's going to be coming up here really soon. Um, I also have the NAD M33 in for review, and they want it. They're eager to get it back. <laughs> They've emailed me like three or four times during this move process. And they're like, hey, uh, about that NADM33, can we have that back soon? So I'm going to be knocking that out. So that will be coming up. And then I have a bunch of really cool tube stuff that I'm dying to share with you. So this is actually... Um, tube monoblock amplifiers and a tube preamp and it is from greece and so it's zacharitis is the uh, company zacharitis devices and i am so eager to talk about all that stuff so those reviews are coming up and then i have a whole lot of projects that are still pending that i'm going to be talking about as well one really awesome update uh, for those that are interested in my take on vinyl and analog, 
that amazing Pure Fidelity turntable that we reviewed after I finished that up and I talked to John. Uh, he graciously extended a longer term loan with this beautiful turntable. And this is a win-win for both of us because I had to knock out that review in a very short period of time and I want to spend more time with it and I want to talk about it some more. Um, obviously, this isn't one of those silly things of, oh, he gave it to you. No, no, no. It's just here for a longer period of time and I'm going to be able to hang on to it and keep talking about it so we can do some more videos and you know get that out for you guys. So that is also coming up, which is really exciting and really cool. And I know that a lot of you guys um, miss my reviews on analog. And so, yeah, I plan on doing that. So those are all of the house cleaning topics that I wanted to knock out before we just see how the heck you guys are doing because it's been a while since I have been online. Uh, we just released the first ever Ron and Randy audio podcast where we are face to face and that was really weird, <laughs> but it was fun. And um, I plan on doing more podcasts and things like that. I have, uh, I think, I don't know if he's still in the chat, but Danny Ritchie and I, he's in Texas, not far from me at all. We did an interview. I've always wanted to interview Danny because I know him so well. I edit all the videos that are on GR Research, and I've always wanted to sit down and ask him questions because I see all of his videos. I pay attention to the comments. I see a lot of the stuff that people always ask him and he's probably so busy that he's not able to answer every single question that comes up on his videos. And I thought, well, why don't we just sit down? I know all these questions by heart because I've seen them come up so many times. I'll ask you the questions. Let's clear the air and see your take on things like, you know, modifications, what does that mean to Danny Ritchie? And so I titled the video, Understanding Danny Ritchie. And I think that it's gonna be helpful for those that really don't get what he does or they don't, you know, it, maybe it doesn't sit well with them. And there's, I think there's quite a few people that are like, eh, modifying speakers, man, why, why would you do that? I mean, it's all art. So just leave the speaker as is. And I ask him that question and we kind of dive into that. We also talk about parts and do all parts in a speaker matter? And if they do, then which parts matter the most? It was cool to get his take on that and uh, a bunch of other stuff. That podcast is out tomorrow. It'll be on my channel and it will also be on Danny's channel. So that's that. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and answer questions. Um, one thing I want to mention, and I'm going to get this ironed out. I don't know if I'm lagging on your end. I actually have really fast internet. I have fiber out here and it's one gig up, one gig down, but on wireless, it's actually a bit sketchy in this room. So I think I'm just going to get a really long ethernet cable, plug it directly into the modem. And that way I don't need to worry about it. But anyways, um, Hopefully this is coming in, you know, clear and I'm not lagging too much, but let's go ahead and open up for questions and let me just pull up the chat here and see if I've missed anything so far. John's in the house. Hello, Ron, and welcome back to this fun thing we call YouTube. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, John, uh, by the way, thank you so much for the... Uh, for the gift that you sent us through Amazon, the uh, dish towels. Uh, John is just an awesome dude. He does all these little 3D, I, sh I should have brought some, I'm a jerk. Uh, these 3D printed, he did my Obi, Obi Ron Kenobi uh, print that you guys have seen, the 3D print of that, the statue. He's done stuff for uh, Steve Guttenberg. He's done stuff for Cheap Audio Man. And just being a kind and cool person, he sent us these dish towels and it says, turn it up. This is my jam. And there's two j jam jars on the dish towels. And my wife freaked out. She's like, oh, I love those. Those are awesome. So, 
super, super nice, and I really do appreciate it. That was very kind of you. All right, let's take a look here. We got Champer in the house. He says, what's cracking? Glad to see you back. I'm about to order the new Sapphire M4s. That is awesome. Uh, I didn't even realize that they were officially out. I am aware of those speakers, and I, I haven't talked to Clayton since I've been in Texas. I need to reach out to that cat and see what the heck is going on and make sure that things are going well. But yeah, you're going to love them. Uh, you're going to love them. I, I can't wait to get the Sapphires uh, set up in my room and um, spend time with them again. So fantastic, fantastic speakers. Uh, Randy just messaged me and he said, he called me a cuss word. That's how he talks to me. And he says, I'm cramming for a video. One moment. So he should be in here shortly and he'll harass me. Um, that's cheap audio man for you. All right, let's take a look here. Are you surprised by all the hoopla over Apple Music finally offering lossless streams? No, I'm not. I mean, I think it's high time that we see some progress, um, you know, in that arena. But as I said in the Holo Audio Maydac review, I had a big moment when that DAC was under review, and it was kind of like a change. It changed the way that I think about streaming because I spent so much time streaming and then I started listening to the stack with just CDs, Red Book, 1644. And man, I got to say that, you know, even when I'm streaming high resolution, and I don't know what Apple lossless is going to sound like, so I, the verdict is still out, but 1644 it's all you need. It really is. It it really is. And and when it comes to like high resolution streaming, even when comparing that to just the CD, 1644 just cut from the CD, I prefer the sound of the CD. Even if we're comparing like high resolution streaming. Now, here's a big disclaimer. If we're talking about high resolution that you download depending on how it was handled that might take the lead that might be a different ball game but that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking specifically about streaming and i just gotta say that it's been my experience at red book 1644 is amazing and it's all that you really need so yeah i mean i do get i'm not surprised by the hoopla i, I think it's high time that we see that kind of progress and i think that progress is good am i gonna rush out and get you know, Apple lossless. No, no, I'm not. So yeah, I think that speaker manufacturers think more about the bottom line than they do about the art, especially mass market speakers. Uh, Reginald, you should watch the interview with Danny because that is something very specific that we talk about. And you, my friend, are not wrong. There's no doubt about that. Uh, are you still going to review the SVS Ultra Towers? Thanks. Yes, they are in a storage container just to the side of the house, and I can't wait to get those into the listening room. But I've got to figure out. I got to spend. I got to settle into this listening room and get to know it before I really start devoting to doing the reviews. I need to know how does this room sound, and it's really important that I get that part right because this this room sounds different than my other room quite different. And so I need to figure that out before I start, you know, diving back into, uh, into reviews. Um, what are the next loudspeaker reviews? So these guys are next, uh, the ELAC Unify reference, just because I've been spending time with these and I, I think I know these by now, I'm going to knock out the bookies and these at the same time, probably do it in one review. I don't think I'm going to do two separate reviews like I did before with the Unify 2.0s. We have the uh, SVS Ultras that are in for review for speakers. We have some stuff from Trying One. I forget the name because they're all weird names, but it's a tower speaker. It's 4000 bucks. and what's interesting about it is that they have a tweeter in the front and a tweeter in the back. So this is a unique design, and just based on experience and spending time like learning about those types of designs, there's a right way to do that. And I'm hoping that they, <laughs> I'm hoping that that's what they did. 
Um, but either way, I can't wait to tackle that speaker and figure it out. So yeah, anywho, uh, let's take a look here. Hey, hey, so many folks jumping in here. Um, True Voice of Reason, that's an old school New Record Day fan. That is awesome. Obi-Ron Kenobi. Uh, there's no lag showing up on my computer here in Denver, Colorado. That is good to hear. Awesome. Uh, that turntable was gorgeous. I was so happy to see a turntable review. That's going to be my next step. Trey, that is awesome. Uh, that table is spectacular. You could not go wrong with it. There's no doubt. There's no question you could go wrong with that table. Um, review Fink Team Kim, please. I'm not really sure what that is. I'll have to check that out. Uh, cheap audio man looks like he has showed up. Louis Stripes, thank you so much for the super chat. Randy, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> it is really helpful right now. Um, no doubt about that. Thank you for your generosity. That will come in handy. No doubt about that. Um, I'm not sure. Um, Zen Moristi, am I? I don't know if I'm saying your handle right, but you say. Review Fink Team Kim, please. I'm not sure what that is, so let me know down below. Maybe it's just a misspelled or whatever. Let me know. Uh, thankfully, Lossless is a free upgrade, and I was already an Apple Music subscriber. Hey, you know what? That is a good point, and I'm glad that they did that. The fact that it is the same price. Now, that's, that's the kind of stuff that I do want to see because then that creates competition, and so that forces... Title, Cobas, Spotify, maybe to react. And if we see prices go down, then you know that's that's kind of a good thing. I don't know what that means for the artists. I mean, not that the artists are getting paid a whole lot through streaming services to begin with. So uh, I don't know. That's out of my realm. It's out of my wheelhouse, and I probably shouldn't even mention it because I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to that stuff. But, anyways. Uh, here we go. Uh, Brent is saying, OMG, Ron, I tried DSD-256 on my new Holo Maydeck, and it's insane. It's also insanely huge file sizes. A song is over a gigabyte file size. Brent, uh, thank you for bringing that up. I have been wanting to try some of those DSD files because I know that Tim from Holo Audio is like, bro, you need to try that. You need to try that. I can't, I can't, I can't do the Christopher Walken impression like my buddy Randy. That that was my pathetic attempt at doing Walken, and I I can't do it. Yeah, so he he said you got to try it, and I'm excited to give it a go. Hey Ron, good to see you back. I'm saving up for some new speakers. I was going to go for the Polk Reserves, and now the new Elac re uh, reference are out. Can you touch on their differences and similarities? Yes. Uh, I would say that these guys are going to be a bit more neutral through the mid bass and bass. I, I felt like with the Polk reserves, there was a bit more, Hey, and that, Hey, can be a good thing, but it can also be a consequence. And so I think that it was a bit more heavy handed through mid bass and bass. So depending on your preference in that arena and what you're looking for, um, it's something that you need to be aware of. So keep that in mind. From mid-band and above, I think I'm going to prefer these guys. I think these guys are going to take the lead. I think they are going to offer a bit more clarity, a bit more detail, whereas the reserves, mm, it's close. I'm struggling. I'm struggling because you know what? They're both really good from mid-band and beyond, but I think with the reserves, there's just a bit more. And so, you know, if that's what you want, then great. But if you want something to be a bit more linear, I think these guys would be the way to go, in my opinion. If you want something a little bit more heft and a little bit more weight, a little bit more meat on the bones, maybe in lower male vocals, uh, then I would say the Polk Reserve would be the way to go. That's my thoughts. It's always a good day when I can catch a live stream. Great to see you, Ron. Hope you're 
your day is doing well. Uh, it's going great, and thank you so much for the kindness. I do appreciate it. How do magnets work? Golden Sound, a uh, cheap audio man, is, um, is well-versed on magnets, and he can explain how magnets work. You know, it's funny. I Earlier, when I was setting up the studio, I dropped a container of thumbtacks, and I immediately went to my wife and I said, hey, babe, do you want to play a game with me? And she looked at me weird like, uh, yeah, okay. And I said, well, for legal reasons, I have to tell you the name of the game. The name of the game is, can you come and help Ron find a bunch of thumbtacks that fell into the carpet and he doesn't know where they're at? And my wife, who is rather smart, she just handed me a magnet. Like, there you go. And she won the game. I, I thought maybe we were going to come in here and like, step around and tell, ooh, there's a thumbtack. Ooh, there's a thumbtack. But no, she gave me a magnet. She's smart. I'm not. Put a throw rug down and illuminate your first reflection. reflections. It should be okay in the new room. Thank you, Reginald. I do appreciate your advice. I'll be uh, tackling uh, room treatments here in that room shortly. Is MQA really worth it when many masters aren't even high res? True voice of reason. Uh, you know, um, I've never been sold on MQA from the get-go. I mean, it's fine, and when I see it, I enable it or, you know, I make it do its thing, but I don't know if when I'm listening to MQA and then when I'm not listening to MQA, I'm like, I really wish everything had MQA. I wish everything was delivered through MQA. I'm not buying it. I, I think it's fine. But I don't think that it is as wow as maybe what we were led to believe. That's my thoughts. That's my opinion. Brent, my goodness sakes, thank you so much for that super chat. Thank you, brother. Uh, you know, that is very, very gracious and uh, certainly needed. <laughs> thank you. Um, really do appreciate that, man. That's very kind. How, have does a perpetual motion machine work? Uh, Cheap Audio Man is asking, have does a perpetual machine motion machine work? So if anybody wants to answer that question, that mess of a question, um, you can do so. Um, if you want to know how, how, Randy, a perpetual motion machine works, um, it works through flux capacitation, but you have to you have to be well versed in the rotary girder, and you are not. So leave it to the experts. Uh, Darko is well versed in all things flux capacitation and rotary girders, and he should be able to knock that out for you, buddy. Hey, Golden Sound. Uh, oh, that's you guys are talking to each other. Sorry. Uh, the way they made da 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 da. Let me just catch up. All right, here we go. Oh, Benny K's bandwidth. Hey, Ron, my friend. Long time no talk. House Texas, Arizona is still hot. Yeah, you know, um, our first week in Texas, beautiful rain. Lots of rain. And I was like, what is this falling from the sky? This is crazy because we don't see a whole lot of that in dry, hot Arizona. And so, and everything is green. It's not all dead or trying to die, hoping to die. So that was really cool to, to see that. And so we experienced that and the weather has been beautiful. The last couple of days have been a little bit hotter. But it's not hot. I'm, I've kind of been laughing as, you know, I'm talking to my fellow neighbors and they're like, oh, boy, it's a it's a burner out today. And I'm like, yeah, you're funny. Uh, no, it, it's been really nice, man. Been really, really nice. Hello again, Ron. Any views or thoughts on Magnet speakers, particularly the Quantum 553. I've never even heard of those speakers, so I would have to check those out. I'm not really positive. 
Did you have an eye on your room dimensions when deciding on your new place? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I needed to know room dimensions. That was a big part of it. I, I, <laughs> I'm spoiled. It's like, I, I need a listening room. And don't put me in a 10 by 10 room. Because I, I will not be a happy camper. And I'll start reviewing dumb headphones like Joshua Valor and DMX. Uh, I love those guys, just so you know. Love them to death. I just give them a hard time because they review headphones. Oh, it's a headphone you put on your head. We're too weak to lift up speakers, so we review headphones. That's Valor. DMX is pretty tough. He's a scrapper. Anyways, uh, Rick Lowe's Concept 300 review. Yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me. I do have the Concept 300s, and those will that will be out again soon. So it's going to be like speaker, 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 speaker. I'm going to be playing catch up. Uh, NADM 33 will be tucked in there as well. Um, but we're going to get back on schedule at least a review per week, if not more. I'm going to try to hustle and see if I can crank out maybe two per week. We'll see how that goes. But I don't want to compromise on my happiness with the review. Um, you know, how being able to sleep at night saying, did I do everything that I needed to do? And did I do it well? Did I do it right? That's important to me. So I just don't want to compromise that. Uh, is the Klipsch Heresy fatiguing? No, it was not fatiguing for me, but it is a pretty lively speaker. So depending on your threshold of fatigue and what you consider fatiguing, I could see that as being potentially, potentially a fatiguing speaker. So... Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of squirming through this. It's a lively speaker, but I I personally, honestly, I never was fatigued listening to the Heresy. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Travis. I appreciate it. Hey Ron, I saw a video of you at some audiophile convention talking about the Oceanway Studio monitors. I'd love to see an Oceanway monitor review. Key three Dutch and Dutch. Um, 8C studio monitors. Yeah, I've actually reached out to Oceanway a number of times and we just never made it happen. I would love to review their stuff as well because I was really impressed. So now that I'm here and I'm settling in again into a new place, maybe I can make that happen. I can't wait to show off the listening room because it is a legitimate listening room. And I'm hoping that maybe... Some of those companies that are like, well, see, does he have a really does he really have a listening room or is it a living room? Kind of a listening room. No, it's it's a listening room. That is its function. That is its purpose. And I'm going to get it right. So I hope I can make those work. I am familiar with the Dutch and Dutch, and I've never reached out to them, but I'll be happy to add those to the list. Hello, have you tried Apple Music yet? I think there is a lot of misunderstanding, especially with Mac MIDI settings. Um, yeah, I use I tried Apple Music for a little while, um, and I liked it, but um, I prefer Tidal and Cobuzz myself. Those are my go-tos. Why no Texas attire? Um, when Randy came over, he stole my brush popper, and he stole my cowboy boy hat, and he, and he left a big old jerk so that's why no no um texas attire that is the reason why room dimensions nerd that's from cheap audio man yeah yep i am a nerd that is true it is absolutely true uh what do you think about amt ribbon tweeter um i do think about amt ribbon tweeters often um, and they're weird <laughs> of all the tweeters out there. I think the AMT is probably the strangest bird for me because they're very hit and miss. Either I like them or I don't. There's never a, yeah, okay. I mean, they're all, they're all pretty good. I don't feel that way about AMTs. I feel like they either, always call attention to themselves or somebody was able to get them to relax and let go. And there's a sound about them that always, 
I'm just always like, there's an AMT, there's an AMT, there's an AMT, and it drives me crazy. So yeah, that's what I think about AMT ribbon tweeters. Do you need some fancy food in your listening room in your fancy chair? Cheap Audio Man is on fire tonight. Um, I do have a fancy new chair. I bought a new listening chair. I saved up my hard-earned pennies, and uh, it is a copy, a knockoff of a Eames lounge chair. And I got it on Amazon, and it is fantastic. I'm currently sitting on the ottoman in the listening, in the studio. So, yeah, super nice. I like the chair. Um, and I don't think I'm going to eat any fancy food in the listening room because I don't want to get the listening room all messy. I'm a, you saw me eat. I'm a messy eater. I just go after it. Yeah, we had open face enchiladas when uh, Cheap Audio Man was over. Cooked him up some good Mexican food. It was awesome. All right, let's take a look here. I hope you sent the Bifrost home with Randy. I did. Uh, not only that, but I sent him a pair of Agers. I sent him the Freya Plus. He's got a whole bunch of shit that he's going to talk about. Hopefully soon. We'll see. Ron, were you able to purchase the binaural microphone? Uh, no, I was not. But let's talk about that. And I mentioned it at the beginning of the live stream. There's still hope. The GoFundMe is still active. I just have to send the binaural microphone back. They need it back. So my time with it is up. But here's the deal. I've talked to Sennheiser, and they're like, even though you have to send this one back, you can buy a new one, and it's not going to be a, a, a different price. So, folks, the GoFundMe is still active. I'm going to keep it active, and if you're able to contribute uh, to getting the binaural dummy head, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, DMS reviews headphones. DMX rest in peace. Yeah, I, you know, I, it's just habit. I call DMS DMX, and that stems from the between two speakers bit that uh, Randy used to do. And I wish he would do. I wish he would bring that back. Any other fans of the between two speakers episodes? I, I thought that was a good bit, and for some reason he stopped doing it. Um, Probably because he's like reviewing 537,000 DAX and headphone amplifiers is probably the reason why, which is dumb. And he should stop that and get back to doing between two speakers because it's so entertaining. Welcome back. The Pure Fidelity turntable and arm quality looks amazing. It would be interesting to hear you cover some cartridge and phono reviews while you have it. Make sense with it. Absolutely. So I have the Holo Audio uh, phono amplifier. And Tim just messaged me earlier about that, and we're chatting about what that review is going to look like. So that's going to happen no matter what. And that's their Mark III, LCR Mark, no, Mark V. LCR Mark, LCR Mark V. I get their naming structure wrong. I'll link it down below, you know, once the video is out. Um, anyways, yeah, so that's done. I have the tried and true... Uh, PH 9.0 from ModRite, which is my reference. Uh, I own that, and that has been my reference for a few years. It's a wonderful sounding tube, all tube phono. But to your point, I plan on actually moving into other phonos. And yes, I will finally get around to reviewing the Puff, and I promise. So, yeah. Hey, Ron, when you do the NAD M33, don't forget to test it with an external DAC turntable with a tube uh, preamp and use it as a power amp. Compare that with, yes, Brent, all of the above. Yes, and that's actually going to be a big part of that review because as you probably already know, the NAD M33 is able to do so many freaking things. It, it's, it's not just an integrated amplifier, and that's it. It does a lot of amazing things. And so I'm excited to talk about it and give you my thoughts. A friend of mine would like to buy her husband a star turntable for a birthday present. Should she try used? I suggest the Riga Planar 1. Any suggestions? I would also recommend the Riga Planar 1. I think that's a great choice. If not the Riga Planar 1, I would say the tried and true um, carbon from Project, uh, the Project Carbon would be 
another good choice, you know, uh, nothing wrong with those tables. Um, but yeah, I, I think that a plan R one for a starter table, starter deck can't go wrong with it. Buying used is fine. I would say that I'd say that the gig is up and I would say that the problem with buying a used turntable right now is they are a bit spendy and people know like, oh, well, everybody likes turntables and vinyl now. So it's not as easy to find those gems, but they can be found. If you find like an older dual turntable, um, they're fantastic. I highly recommend those and older techniques, not a bad choice. Older pioneers, depending on the model again, very good. So yes, they're out there, but if reliability and brand new warranties are a concern, then you're on the right track. All right. Uh, let's just take a look here. Cheap audio man. When you say listening room, I just hear bookies. So what Randy's talking about is what is known as a stand mount or bookshelf loudspeaker. And, um, for short, what everybody says is, is bookies. They're bookies. And it drives Randy crazy when I say that. And he wants to just slap me right in the face every time I say bookies. So let's, let's say bookies a lot in the rest of the live stream. Ron, I got two shit agers. I only need one. They get really hot around 120 degrees Fahrenheit in 10 by 10 room. That's a heater. It sounds pretty cool. Yeah, uh, they do get warm. There's no doubt about that. Listening room dimensions, 16 feet wide, and I think it's 22 or 23 feet deep is the listening room dimensions. So pretty, pretty good size. Pretty good. Uh, why the move to Texas? Anything you can share? I enjoy your li your lives. Thanks for doing these. Yeah, Scott. Uh, happy to talk about that. Um, the primary reason that we decided to move to Texas is Sarah and I are pretty nomadic, and we've always been nomadic. We're not homeowners. We've never been homeowners. And while that is of interest to us, eventually. Um, we've always rented in Arizona, the market, the real estate market in Arizona right now is if it's not crazy and insane right now, it is quickly moving in that direction. The house that we were in was around 1400 square feet and we were paying $1,600 a month for it, which was fine. We could make that work. The problem is, is that with this insanity that is happening in Arizona right now, real estate is going up, the prices of rent is going up, and as an example, the house right next door just went on the market for rent uh, in Arizona, and they're asking $2,300. Exact same house, exact same layout, and it just so happens that our property management company sold to another property management company and Sarah and I could see the writing on the wall. We're coming up for the lease and it's like rent is about to go up and there's no, there's no question it's going to go up and even more it's, it's, we don't know what we're doing there anymore and we don't feel the stability there anymore and it's hard to see past a year or two years you know it's like we don't want to buy a home in arizona right now because the real estate is totally upside down and it's a seller's market not a buyer's market at all and when we started looking at housing in texas it was very reasonable uh the house that i'm in right now is twice the size of our other house the kids have bedrooms, which is awesome. I have a separate studio space, not a corner of a bedroom. I have my own listening room. I have a lot more room to work, and it is cheaper than what we were paying, you know, for our rental in Arizona. So, uh, 
there, it just feels more stable. That's the reason that we, we made the move. And I don't mind talking about that. So thank you for asking. Uh, Ron has reviewed the Martin Logan bookies, <laughs> the bookies, XI30, XI35s. Yes, I have. Um, it's a rocking chair. It's not a rocking chair. It's a lounge chair. You know, I'm kidding. I love you, and I'm just jealous of all your cool stuff. Uh, Cheap Audio Man, you can borrow anything that I own for as long as you want, including my chair. If you ever want to borrow my chair, you may, you may do so, my friend. What is something that you listen to that, good or bad, you went WTF? There have been some speakers that I've heard where I've had that reaction. Uh, I don't know if I want to, I don't know how diplomatic it would be to give the names of those speakers, but there, you know, in the history of new record day, there's only been like four or five that have been sent back, maybe three or four, five is too many. I think it's like three or four. And there have been some speakers that I've heard where I was like, are you, are, are you serious? Like, it's not even. It's, it's, there's, <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now because I, even to this day, it's like, what, do you, what, what, what were you thinking? <laughs> it's like, bah, 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 here's a speaker, blah. And that's kind of what it sounded like when I tried to play it. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, you go home. Um, yeah, th th there have been some on the negative side. I'm not going to name them by name. It doesn't matter. There have been some. On the flip side of that, Sapphires, Spatial Audio Sapphires, the most recent speaker that I've reviewed, Sapphires, those were a wow for me. I was like, wow. Okay. All right. Now, these are fantastic. Uh, GR Research and Exoticas. Wow. Again, huge. WTF, brain melting, brain falling out of your ear because you can't, you can't even begin to understand how this is happening. It's that type of an experience. Um, every single time that I have visited Danny from GR Research, who now is not too far from me, um, the NX Streams, so GR Research NX Streams in his big giant room. It's, it's a, it's John, it's a mind bend. Um, so yeah, so all, all of those have been big wow moments and they all have one thing in common. They're all open baffle and, uh, man, they're just amazing, truly amazing. So yeah, uh, let's see here. Isn't Randy paying you super chats on here like toy Oda? Oh, this dumb thing always. Freaks out on me. Let me back up. Let me back up. Isn't Randy paying you super chats on here like Toyota sending money to Lexus? Yes. Yep. Yep. He is. He is. Uh, ever heard those pedestal completed speakers on GR Research? No, Josh, I haven't. I haven't heard uh, what you're thinking of is the Carnegie I think it's the Carnegie speakers, and I haven't heard any, any of those models, so I can't comment on them. Um, Danny says they're good. I trust Danny. I believe Danny. He is an honest fella. And if he says they're good, then they're good. So, but I haven't heard them, so I can't comment. Any suggestions for desktop speakers for computer desk setup? Um, boy, oh boy, Scott, it's kind of, kind of a big, that's a big, conversation uh what is your budget like cheap like cheap little guys uh the little micas rb42s i think those are killer little desktop speakers so the those are fine you know little little dudes uh, i like those a lot hey ron welcome back what's going on with the x5s the x5s are here and yes i will be doing a review of the spatial audio x5s um they're here i brought them with me I was like, Clayton, you cannot have these back yet. I'm not done. So I'll be, I'll be spending more time with those for sure. 
Uh, you had the speaker with the purified trandu transducer. Uh, did not like the tweeter on it. You like the Sapphire tweeter. Would those two go together? Roberto, you're asking a good question, but it's a complex question. Would those go together? You're building a crossover for those, and so there's a lot of different parameters and things that would make those two work well together, and that's way beyond what I would be able to discuss in a live chat. Um, I apologize. I just can't dive into that. That would take a while to like start figuring that out. Um, I would imagine that with the right crossover network, it is possible, but I don't know for sure. You had the speaker. Uh, let's see here. Uh, next one. Ron, are open baffle speakers always the best to compare to sealed or even ported enclosure? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a it's it, it's a hard thing to compare because they're two different animals. I mean, if you're comparing tone, if you're comparing the tone structure of the speakers, then it's fair. Where it's not fair is pretty much everything else because it has been my experience for at least the caliber of open baffle speakers that I've spent time with and I've, I'm very fond of. When it comes to things in the time domain, we're talking about things popping off in the sound stage. Man, it is... It is incredible what open baffle speakers can do in that arena. And the same thing is true down below. So when we get down to bass and how the bass sounds, the, the, the decay structure of the bass is different with open baffle than it is in a box speaker because there is no box, right? And so it's fast, it's quick to respond, and it's articulate and it's clean, and it's clear, and so you're hearing the attack and the decay so clearly that it's it's kind of a mind melt, and so that's where it's not really as easy to compare the two, you know, compare those. It's like, eh, well, open baffle is a different animal, but if we're talking about just the tone structure, I think, it, I think you can make comparisons, and that's fine. Um, so yeah, good question. Let's take a look here. I'm just cruising on down below. Uh, green eggs and ham. Thank you so much for the super chat. I do appreciate that. Um, real estate prices are going up everywhere. Yep. 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 That is true. Yep. Arizona is cray cray. Yep. 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 Do you like speakers that have more detailed in the highs or warmer speakers? Hi-Fi Photo Bree. Um, I like a neutral or a linear loudspeaker that gives me clarity. I mean, that is, that is a summation of what I am looking for, is I want a speaker that tells the truth, right, that isn't doing anything wonky to the signal going into the speaker. I want... A linear response, that is my definition of accurate. If there are such things as an accurate loudspeaker, we must start with a linear response. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I want, out of that linear response, I want to hear clarity, detail retrieval. I want to hear everything presented with precision. I want to hear all of the little missing little nuggets. I don't want that to be hidden. Um, that's the speaker that I'm after. Now, at the same time as a reviewer, and this is something that I've had to get better at over the years and it's taken time, is I can still celebrate when a speaker isn't doing what I just said, but it's still, it's doing, it's giving heft and weight. It's it's maybe has a bit more bloom or the mid-range is a little bit more forward. Th things like this, as a reviewer, I think I need to just explain how it sounds, and then it's less about whether I like it. It's just, this is what the speaker is doing. And if you like that, which a lot of audiophiles do, then go for it. But you asked, what about me? I'm looking for linear. 
and I'm looking for clarity, detail retrieval. And my goodness sakes, for the love of all things that are holy, I'm looking for texture and tone in bass. I want to hear an upright the way that it should it should be played. I want to hear it. And so that's important to me. Yeah, good question. Ron, still waiting to hear your long-term evaluation conclusion piece on the Spatial X5 versus Spatial M3 comparison. Yeah, I'm, I'm you and me both. Uh, I need to spend more time with the X5s. Uh, they are, man, they're, you know, it's, what's cool about this Spatial Audio offering from what I can see right now is it's, it is two different flavors. I mean, it's two different, those are two different machines. And I, I like that. I think that's actually kind of a smart move is they, they do sound different from each other. And so I'm excited to tackle that for sure. Lots of people are moving out of the big cities. Yep, 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 yep. Desktop speakers coming, Danny Ritchie says. So uh, stay tuned from GR Research. Uh, he is working on, he's cooking up something in the kitchen. And it's been a while since we've seen anything from uh, GR Research's new products. So that'll be cool. I'm excited to see what he does. Can you get a review of the spatial uh, M5, please? I was in the market for a used pair of M3 MTMs, but was advised to wait to hear the M5. Your best qualified, oh, okay. Um, spatial M5. Is that the, sa the, sapphire? the Sapphire? I'm not really, David, explain which exact model you're talking about. Are you talking about the Sapphire M5 or the M3? I mean, the, the M3 and the M5 are essentially identical, except you just don't have the bottom woofer, you know, to give you a bit more bass. I mean, I would expect them to sound the same outside of that. You're just going to have less. Ugh. So I would say, listen to what I had to say about the spatial Sapphire M3s and apply it to the M5s. Outside of, it's going to have based, you know, flat, measured flat in room down to 28 hertz. You know, I doubt that the M5 is going to hit down quite that low. Um, and by all means, if Clayton hears this, he can he can jump in the comments and he can correct anything that I'm saying that's not true. So I invite him to do so. Um, yeah. Brent, thank you so much for the super chat, dude. You're awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, means the world to me. I really do appreciate it. Danny Ritchie, can you name the desktop bookies? So Danny, somebody, John Shepler, a good friend of New Record Day, is asking, what is the name of those bookies you're talking about? All right. Uh, do you listen to classical music? Yes, I do. Um, well, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me back up. There are some classical pieces that I, I do listen to from time to time. I also spend quite a bit of time listening to soundtracks that have classical music or have classical arrangements in soundtracks. So mm, kind of a hybrid. I'm certainly not a classical music junkie or anything like that. Good question. Thanks for your channel. Thank you for your comment. I appreciate it. Uh, can adding a second sub to a high-end bookshelf setup add significant texture to the sound? Depends on the sub. Um, when it comes to bass, all things bass, when we start talking about texture and tone, it has been my experience that the king out there is a paper cone driver. You see a lot of subs that have aluminum domes that, you know, are, and look, I mean, talk about aluminum domes. That's aluminum, you know. There are pros and cons. There, there, there's no perfect material to use for everything, but if you are after texture and tone, it has been my experience that paper cone is king. And so it has been my experience that any subs that do have paper cone drivers tend to have a bit more texture and tone. So those are my thoughts on that. 
Taking it a step further, subwoofers that don't have a box, so open baffle subwoofers, they kick it up a notch. Because what happens is, and you must understand that subwoofers are low pre they're uh, pressure devices, right? It's sound pressure, right? And so as that pressure is trying to escape the box, you have the attack of what is hopefully a paper cone driver. And you might hear that leading attack, but everything after it is boom. And it's just room boom. And that is an effect. It is the sound of your room. I can't stress this enough. That big boom. It's not on the recording. And when you hear an open baffle sub that plays the note or whatever the note is clean, and then you just have a quick decay after it and you don't have that room boom, it is a different experience. And for me, it's blood in the water. It was one of those things where I was like, I love that, especially when it comes to listening to music. Now, a cinema, I back up, I digress. Having some room boom in cinema as an effect can be a lot of fun. And so I'm getting long-winded, but texture and tone, yes, on a second sub, you can achieve that. I would be on the hunt for a subwoofer with a paper cone driver. You will also be able to even out the room response with a second subwoofer, and that's a great way to do it. So yeah, a couple of things there just to keep in mind. All right, let's take a look here. Sorry, I'm just catching up, seeing if there's anything that I missed. Here we go. Can you do REW measurements so we can see uh, what your room measures before and after? Also try this room mode calculate. Yeah, I'd be happy to, Gene. Uh, no problem. I will do before and after you know, treatment. The whole nine yards, and I'll take you guys, I'll do a, a video all about setting up the listening room. I, I need to do that. I need to do that so you guys can see what I'm thinking and what I'm hearing and how I'm addressing things and what I'm listening for. So I'll be happy to take you along for that journey. Ron, have you heard Sonos Faber speakers? Yes, I have at shows. Uh, how do they compare to the Wharfdale speakers? I'm hoping to be shopping for warm sounding bookies with great tone. Uh, if you're shopping for warm sounding bookies, that's interesting. Uh, Harbeth P3 ESR, that's a warm sounding bookie. If you want to hear just the human voice, that's good enough for you. You want a warmer sounding bookie? I would be after the P3 ESR myself. But, um, they drop off like a rock. You cannot call those linear all the way out to 20K. They drop off like a rock around 15, if not earlier, 12 to 15. <clears throat> Nose dive. But when it comes to human voice, they do a good job with that. That's what they're known for. Um, so those are my thoughts uh, for a warm sounding bookie. I wouldn't even be after the ones that you're mentioning, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, what Ron said, I'm looking for, okay, da da. -da. Does the one Wolfer M5 give you as much bass as the M3 Triode Master? I can't answer that question for you. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't, I've never spent time with the M3 Triode Master, so I don't know. Uh, you could email Clayton uh, Spatial Audio and ask him and see what he thinks. He'd be able to tell you. Kanga Empire. Hey, Ron, nice speakers. Thank you. I appreciate it. I stole them from Andrew Jones. He can't have them back. Too bad, Andrew. You can exchange them for your salsa. I want a, I want a hundred gallon drum of salsa in exchange for these. You can have them back then. No, Danny needs to call the desktop bookies. Oh, yes, I, John. <laughs> I get your joke now. He should call them. He should just call them the bookies, <laughs> so we can just drive. Randy Insane. The GR Research bookies. Maybe the mini bookies. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's great. Uh, thanks for your previous answer. You said the Polks were a bit more meaty in the mid and lower 
bands. And I remember from your review that you really enjoyed the top end of that pointy tweeter. Yes, I did. Uh, it is very clear, articulate. It is fast. I do like the top end on the reserve. I, I really do. Uh, there's no, no doubt about that. Okay, with texture and tone base in mind, can you touch on the differences, similarities between the new Elax and Polk Reserves one more time? You will get a bit more texture and tone out of the reserves than you will with these. These are aluminum drivers, and I will say this, giving credit, and I mentioned this in the Unify 2.0 review, and I don't know if I, if I said it the way that I meant to say it, so I'm going to try to clean it up now. When it comes to texture and tone in aluminum dome drivers, it's difficult to do. I think that Andrew has done as good of a job as maybe one can do with the budget constraints that he has with these speakers. And what I mean by that is it is entirely possible that you could get more texture and tone out of even these or the ELAC 2.0s with higher quality parts. That is entirely possible. More clarity, texture, and tone could be waiting for you. But I feel and I felt with the 2.0s that he has done a good, a very good job of getting giving us a decent amount of texture and tone out of an aluminum dome tower. That being said, Polk Reserves, in my opinion, do take the lead the just, just a bit with texture and tone in mid bass and bass than these do. So again, we're, we're kind of getting down to what are your priorities? What is important to you? What means a lot to you? Those are the kind of things that you kind of need to factor in. So great question. Really good question. Thank you. Let's take a look here. Um, da, 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 da. sorry, it's freaking out. The chat, the chat always jumps up on me. And so I got to pull it down and then reset and see if I've missed anything. So just bear with me if I go silent here as I'm just reading through. I want to make sure I don't miss any questions. There are a couple questions in there for Danny, which is kind of cool. Uh, cheap audio man likes to do it yourself. CSS Crichton, Have you heard them thoughts? Uh, do it yourself, CSS Audio Crichton. Uh, no, I have not heard that model, but I will be getting a pair soon. So I'll be spending time with those and I will let you know what I think. Uh, let's take a look here. Bookies, kind of, <laughs> kind of with Randy here. <laughs> stereo subs. Yeah, you know, stereo subs is just the way to go. There is no question. There is no doubt about that. I, I completely agree with you, Matt. KDR says, uh, listening room setup video would be super informative. No problem. I will make it happen. I think that video would be very helpful, and uh, I'd be happy to do that. Take you guys along uh, you know, for the ride, for the journey. Ron, have you heard the Elac Vela bookies? No, I have not. Thank you for calling them bookies, by the way. Uh, Rand, I don't know if Rand, Randy, have you heard the bookies, the Vela bookies, the bookies from Elac, Elac Vela bookies? <laughs> oh, he's probably going crazy right now. Uh, I have not heard them, um, so I don't, I don't know. No comment. Let's take a look here. I think I am all caught up. Yeah, I'm all caught up. Look at that, Edgy in the house. Hey, dude, how Texas treating you? Uh, what are those speakers? Um, are those behind you? These are ELAC Unify Reference, and they're going to be up for review here shortly. I've got, I've got, I think I got these figured out. I got to check out the bookies, the Unify Reference bookies, and then those reviews will be out soon, 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 soon. Maybe even by next week. Maybe that'll be my focus. Uh, we'll see. All right, I'm all caught up. It is. Nine o'clock. We just hit that hour mark. I think I'm going to call it a night. I just want to get on here and uh, get to the camera here. Uh, say thanks. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you guys for jumping on this on the 
on the live stream tonight, and I appreciate you being so patient as we made this move to Texas. It has been uh, stressful, I guess a little bit stressful. If anything, it's it, I've just had a lot of anxiety because moving a family to Texas and you're leaving family behind, and that's hard. You know, I've been in Arizona my entire life, so I've I've left my family behind, and that's hard. That is difficult, and that I think that will creep up on me more. Um, but we're not too far away, and we plan to visit them. Thank you for hanging out and being patient, and um, thank you for your continued patience. As we start setting up the room, I'll take you guys along for the ride. One of the big benefits as to this location in this house is I'm about to get far more productive than I have been even since I've been doing this full time. I'm going to be able to kick things into high gear because just the you know the layout of the home I have my own studio now and you know God bless my wife she has given me the entire living room is the the listening room she calls it the listening room and she wants me to make it a listening room and so it's all up to me so it's going to it's going to be a listening room and uh thank you thank you so much guys uh thank you for all the super chats again as a last minute reminder i don't want to push this um randy the binaural dummy head it is being sent back but the gofundme is still active and we are we're well past the halfway point so if you see a benefit to having that binaural dummy head in sound clips with commentary please contribute to the GoFundMe. I do appreciate it. And if you're not into that kind of thing, it's totally cool. Totally fine. I, I'm just mentioning it uh, because I think a lot of folks might not know or they don't even realize that video. Anyways, yeah. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah. Live from Texas. We'll see you guys in the next video.